Letrozole is one of the medications that is classified as an aromatase inhibitor. This medication can be used in the treatment of breast cancer in postmenopausal women with hormone receptor positive early breast cancer. This medication can be used both as first and second line treatment for advanced breast cancer. This medication is well known by its brand name, Femora. Letrozole has few advantages over tamoxifen in treating breast cancer. Particularly, it is not acting like an anti-estrogen, therefore, it is not having the risk of developing endometrial cancer. Even it has a lower risk of developing thromboembolic events, so the possibility of the formation of abnormal clots in the arteries is less compared with tamoxifen. Even though letrozole is indicated for the treatment of breast cancer, it can be used to increase ovulation as an off-label indication. Letrozole can also be used for ovulation induction in women with polycystic ovary syndrome. This increases the chance of conception. Letrozole has a few benefits over clomiphene. Clomiphene is one of the CIRM's selective estrogen receptor modulators. It can also be used to induce ovulation by modifying the estrogenic activity. However, letrozole has few advantages compared with clomiphene. Letrozole is associated with a lower risk of multiple pregnancies, which is possible with the use of clomiphene. That means the risk of twins may be less with the use of letrozole. Second, it has fewer anti-estrogenic properties compared with clomiphene. Therefore, it has less effect on the endometrium. Normally, estrogen plays a key role in preparing the endometrium for induction of pregnancy. Estrogen stimulates the endometrial growth and increases the thickness during the preovulatory phase. This makes the endometrium favorable for a fertilized egg. This action of endometrial growth is to some extent blocked by clomiphene because of anti-estrogenic properties. However, letrozole is not showing such anti-estrogenic properties, so it can increase the chance of pregnancy. Third, letrozole is having a short half-life compared with clomiphene. Clomiphene has a half-life of around five days. However, its metabolites can still be found in the feces up to six weeks, even after stopping the medication. Such types of long-term effects are not observed with letrozole. So whenever it is going to be stopped within a few days, its action can be terminated. Because of these three advantages, letrozole may be preferred over clomiphene for induction of ovulation. However, letrozole is not approved, and it is only used off-label. In this video, let us discuss the important facts about letrozole, how this medication works, and how it increases ovulation. What are the important precautions of this medication? Which type of side effects can be observed, and how is it to be taken? All such things we will discuss in this video. First of all, let's see how this medication works. Letrozole works as an aromatase enzyme inhibitor. This is one of the important enzymes that is responsible for the conversion of androgens to estrogens. Androgens are produced in the adrenal glands. However, this conversion particularly takes place in the peripheral tissues. Particularly, two types of androgens like testosterone and androstenedione are going to be converted into estrogens. This enzyme converts the testosterone into estradiol and androstenedione into estrone. In this way, from these two androgens, estrogens are produced. One is the estradiol, and the second one is the estrone. Letrozole helps in blocking the synthesis of estrogens from androgens. In postmenopausal women, estrogen production is going to be stopped. In such conditions, estrogens can be produced from the androgens. Particularly in postmenopausal women, this conversion is the primary source of estrogens. This reaction is mediated by one of the enzymes, aromatase. Letrozole blocks the synthesis of estrogens from these androgens, thereby reducing the progression of breast cancer. It selectively blocks this aromatase enzyme, thereby significantly lowering estrogen levels. This reduces the stimulation of estrogen-dependent breast cancer cells and their proliferation. Letrozole can also increase ovulation, particularly in women with polycystic ovary syndrome. As it blocks the aromatase enzyme, it inhibits the conversion of androgens to estrogens. By reducing the estrogen levels, letrozole stimulates the release of follicle-stimulating hormone from the pituitary gland. This promotes the follicle development and their maturation. It increases the chance of releasing eggs from the ovary. In this way, letrozole can increase the chance of ovulation. Now let us see the dosage of this medication. Letrozole is available as a tablet at a strength of 2.5 mg for treating breast cancer. 
It can be started at a dose of 2.5 milligrams given once a day. It can be taken either with or without food. For induction of ovulation, letrozole is used off-label, where it is again used at a dose of 2.5 milligrams daily. This therapy can be started between the third and seventh day of the menstrual cycle. Usually, it is taken for five days for induction of ovulation. Now let us see the precautions of letrozole. If you have any liver dysfunction, you should use the letrozole at a lower dose. Letrozole is metabolized in the liver. So in the presence of decreased liver function, the levels of this medication may accumulate in your body. Therefore, you should take a low dose of letrozole in case of any liver impairment. Another effect of letrozole is on your bones. Just like many of the medications that affect the estrogen levels, letrozole can also affect your bones. It can reduce the bone mineral density. This may increase the chance of developing bone pain. And if any coexisting risk factors are present or if you have any previous history of reduced bone mineral density or weakened bones, you may have an increased risk of developing osteoporosis. That's why, before starting the therapy, bone mineral density should be monitored. And in people with low bone mineral density, use of letrozole may further increase the risk. This medication can affect your alertness, and it can produce some dizziness and lightheadedness. It can also increase the sleepiness and make you feel fatigued and tired. Therefore, when you're going to operate machinery or drive the vehicles, take more precautions until you adjust to this medication. Letrozole can affect your cholesterol levels in the blood. Particularly, it can increase the total serum cholesterol levels. Therefore, when you're going to use letrozole, it is better to check your lipid profile regularly. In case of significant elevation of serum cholesterol, you may reduce the dose to avoid its complications. What are the side effects of this medication? The important side effects mainly include excessive sweating, bone pain, hot flashes, and back pain. It can also produce night sweats, nausea, and difficulty breathing. People may also have fatigue, constipation, chest pain, and hypertension. Few other side effects are less common. Particularly, it can affect the bones, leading to osteoporosis. Now let's see where this medication should be avoided. When letrozole is indicated for treating breast cancer, it is not suitable for the premenopausal woman. Since letrozole is not directly blocking the estrogen receptors, it has no action on blocking the estrogen actions. It can't stop the binding of estrogen to the estrogen receptors, even if it is not inhibiting the production of estrogen in the premenopausal woman. It only inhibits the estrogen production in postmenopausal women where androgens act as the primary source for estrogen production. Therefore, in the premenopausal woman, letrozole is ineffective to treat breast cancer. However, when it is intended for induction of ovulation, it can be used in the premenopausal woman. In pregnant women as well as lactating women, again, use of letrozole is contraindicated. When letrozole is given to the pregnant woman, it can produce a few of the birth defects. That's why in the pregnant woman, this medication is contraindicated. In case of developing any hypersensitive reactions towards letrozole again, this medication should be avoided. Now let's see drug interactions. One of the key drug interactions is with the tamoxifen. Tamoxifen is an estrogen receptor antagonist. Sometimes it's also called an estrogen receptor modulator. That means it has both agonist and antagonist properties. Tamoxifen can be used to treat breast cancer in both premenopausal and postmenopausal women. This drug is directly blocking the estrogen receptors, thereby inhibiting the actions of estrogen. However, when tamoxifen is given with letrozole, the action of letrozole may be reduced. Even though the exact mechanism is not clear, tamoxifen decreases the levels of letrozole. Therefore, it should not be given along with tamoxifen. However, letrozole therapy can be started after the completion of the standard tamoxifen treatment, where such type of interaction is not observed. These are the key facts about this medication, letrozole. That's all guys. Thanks for watching this video. Share your experience and how it works for you in the comment section below. Have a great day.